Today you have the pleasure to meet our, your new Arkansas 4-H State Officer candidates. I hope that you have all had a chance to meet them and get to know them throughout this week. We will ha now have Olivia McClure, Arkansas 4-H Ambassador from Saline County, lead the Pledge of Allegiance, and Blake Rogers from Arkansas 4-H Ambassador from Washington County, lead the 4-H Pledge. Please stand and remove your hats as a sign of respect. my head to clearer thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, and my health to better living for my club, my community, my country, and my world. Thank you, Olivia and Blake. We are going to kick off this assembly by giving away a door prize. Those will be given out later. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right. Now I'd like to ask Miss Mary Crumley, Arkansas 4-H Adult Volunteer Leader, to come to the stage and present the Papa Top Awards. Good evening. I want to thank all of y'all for doing a great job of collecting Papa Tops. We collected 557 pounds of Papa Tops this year, so that's a pretty good collection. Uh, first district that we're going to give out today is the Delta District. Would somebody from Ashley County come down? Let's give them a hand. There's a lot of you that may not, while she comes down, I'm gonna explain this, there, know what this money is used for. We collect this money and put it into a special account, and if any of our 4 Hers have to be going to the Children's Hospital, Arkansas Children's Hospital, we help fund, if the county requests, sends in a request, we will help fund some of your expenses. So keep collecting, because it helps all of our 4 Hers and, uh, Y'all do a great job as it is, and we're really proud that y'all helped the Leaders Association do this. Ashley County. The next one is Washita, and uh, this year it's Pike County. And last but not least is the Ozark District, and that is Washington County. <laughs> now the suspense is rising. The overall county that collected the most Papa Tops goes to Crawford County. Somebody from Crawford County want to come down? I think this young man is the man who helped collect a lot of these and is behind this. Here he comes. to tell y'all he has a drive behind this because his grandmother is just retired as program assistant and she's behind this 100 percent so I'm sure she's there encouraging him every day to go out and collect more Papa Tops so I want to encourage all of y'all to go out and help us collect Papa Tops you can bring them to your district forum or you can bring them here next year to the state of Rama and we thank you very much from the Leaders Association who helped I do want to thank Washington County 4-Hers and adult volunteers who came and 
stood out in that heat all yesterday morning and helped us weigh and bag all of the Papa Tops. So give a hand to Washington County for helping out. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Crumley. Before we hear from the candidates this afternoon, we want to remind you that there that three are the that three are only candidates for the state officer position. The state 4-H president will come from the officers at large that you elect. Boyce Kate from Greene County and Sabrina Rivas from Sevier County have participated in an interview process that will help determine who will serve as your next state 4-H president. Now it is time to hear from the state officer candidates. There are some qualified candidates and some very qualified candidates. I encourage each of you to listen carefully to their speeches as they will rep be representing you at important state 4-H events during the upcoming year. This year we have nine candidates and only four positions, so be sure to vote for only four. They will give their speeches in the order that they appear on the ballot. Boyce Kate from Greene County will be your first to the stage. Hello, Arkansas 4 H. First, I'd like to say thank you for allow thank you for another great year of service to the uh, to your townships and communities. And uh, Delta District, I know you're here. I'd like to say thank you for allowing me to serve as your Delta District State Vice President. It was an honor. Now, we 4 Hers know how to make a difference, and you know what we call that? Making the best better. Now, my name is Boyce Kate, and hello. All righty, and I'm 18 years old. I'm from Greene County 4 H. I've been part of 4-H for 13 years. Now, I want to tell you some of the qualifications I know I have to be a state 4-H officer. I've run my own lawn mowing service since I was 12 years old, and I know what it means to get up early and go to bed late. I know what it takes to give, I know what it means to give up on some things so I can be able to achieve in others. Now, my main project area is citizenship and livestock, and I've been honored to win the State Illustrated Public Speaking Talk I have uh, two two peanut broilers from the state state fair. I have a state sw senior swine showmanship and state senior swine skillathon. Now, I know what it feels like to win. I know the hard work behind it, but I also know the hard work that goes into behind it, behind it, and I know what it feels like to lose. Arkansas 4-H. I'm asking you for, to vote for me, and uh, I will I will put my work ethics into this program. And I will do my best to do the best by you. And we you know we lose, like I said, we have lost. And as 4 H's, we know how to get up, dust ourselves off, and try even harder. Now, I'm asking you for the opportunity for me to serve as your Arkansas State 4 H officer. And I'll put the work ethics into this program, like I said. And uh, uh, I want to leave you with a quote that made me think. They really got my head turned, and that's really hard to do. And uh, this author is Ida Scott Taylor, and this is the quote. One day at a time, this is enough. Do not look back and be troubled. Over, do not look back and grieve over, grieve over the past, for it is gone. Do not be troubled about the future, for it has not yet come. But live in the present. And for Rachers, the 4 Hers live in the present and make it so beautiful that it will be worth remembering. Now, thank you again, and thank you for another great year of service. And uh, Boyce is the choice for your state 4 H officer. Thank you all very much. All right, thank you. Thank you, boys. We now have Ryan Grubbs from Pike County. Good afternoon, guys. I'm Ryan Grubbs, an Arkansas State 4-H ambassador from Pike County, and I hope to be your next state officer at large. Dance has always been a big part of my life. From tapping to flying in an airplane when I was two. To 
clogging the summer nights not too long ago. It's always something new and fun. 4-H, like dance, can be done individually or as a team. And 4-H, along with dance, has taught me great leadership and responsibility. I've learned you don't have to be a jerk. You're a jerk. I know. You're a jerk. You're a jerk. I know. You're a jerk. To be a great leader, sometimes it's best to just sit back, listen, and learn from others. Dance has also taught me to be dependable and not to wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. wiggle, wiggle. Around my responsibilities. As your next State 4 H officer at large, I'll be able to jump on it. and help lead Arkansas 4-H to a fabulous year. From Thriller Workshops. Hand-jiving community service. We'll continue to make the best better. Because of 4-H, we aren't just friends. We are family. Don't be afraid to throw your hands up. Throw your hands up, hands up. And live a little, have fun, embrace every day as it comes, and don't be a chicken. Vote for me, Ryan Grubbs, your next state 4-H officer at large. Stand up, come on, do it with me. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Ryan. Next is Lauren Leonard from Benton County. Hello. In the following speech, I'm going to be using 37 music terms. See if you can keep up to tempo and pick them out, but no need to take notes. Hi, I'm Lauren Leonard. I've been in 4-H for seven years. I have a passion for music and was recently named state record book winner in arts and humanities. When I first joined 4-H, public speaking definitely wasn't natural for me. I was shy and would do anything to not have to get up in front of a group of people. But over the years, since I have been involved in 4-H, it has helped me become a more outgoing and dynamic person. Not only have my leadership skills hit a higher note, but it has helped me build a strong base of friends that I will have for the rest of my life. In an orchestra, each player and instrument is very unique. Not only, in the part they, not only as individuals, but in the part they play in the group. They each bring something no one else can bring to the table, such as different sounds, talents, and responsibilities. In the string section alone, the violins carry the melody, while the violas support and enhance the melody, and the cellos and basses round everyone out by keeping them together with the tempo and filling the music out with bass notes. They each contribute something to, something to the group, and without one another, the group would fall apart. And um, the group would fall apart. Just like in an orchestra, 4-H'ers are a very special group of individuals, each bringing something entirely unique to the program. And no matter what, uh, no matter what you are involved in, from showing livestock to conducting a workshop or community service project, we all play an important part in our clubs, communities, country, and world. Over this next year, I want to help accompany you along your 4-H journey. I think I can make a positive contribution to this year's officer team. And when working solo, such as practicing alone, 
or in an ensemble where I'm planning and conducting a county event with my county council officer team or working with fellow ambassadors, I am dedicated to whatever task is at hand and will work hard to make every event the best it can be. Having treble, major or minor, you can count on me. So let's work in perfect harmony and keep up beat. Arkansas 4-H is a sharp group, and I hope I'm your natural choice for your next officer at large. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Next, we're gonna have Lauren, Laurel Mayo from Benton County. How are you guys doing? Good? You can do better than that. How are you guys doing? Woo! Okay, awesome. Okay, but I'm still not done. about you but my mom can make a mean chicken salad sandwich and not just any old chicken salad sandwich either well today I'm here to show you not only what goes into this mean sandwich but how I've added my own 4-H flavor hi my name is Laurel Mayo and I'm a nine-year member of the Centerton 4-H Club in Benton County now you may be wondering why I got up here and started talking about a sandwich well in my opinion a good sandwich it's kind of like a good state 4-H officer. You have to have all the right ingredients and something very flavorful to bring it all together. So let's get started and make this 4-H sandwich. First, we'll start with the bread. The bottom slice is like our parents. They're our, they're our base of support and are always there to lift us up and bring out the flavor they know we have in us. The top slice, is our volunteers and leaders. They're always there to look over us and provide that soft touch of encouragement. Now the meat of 4-H is our project work and activities that we're involved in. Throughout my 4-H career, I've been extremely active in many different project areas, ranging from livestock to talent to fashion and beyond. The work that I put into these projects has helped me to be named a state record book winner this past year. Now, we'll add some celery for a little green color and to remind us that a state officer needs to stand tall and strong. Being a mentor and providing leadership is a very important part of 4-H. Not only have I held club office positions, but I'm a county team leader, a county council vice president, and a state ambassador. These positions have taught me how to set the example for my fellow 4-Hers how to plan and organize different events, and how to properly lead a group activity. Now a little fruit, add some sweetness. By giving back to our communities, we add sweetness to the lives of others every day. Some of my favorite community service projects to take part in are handing roses to widows on Valentine's Day, placing flags on veterans' graves on Memorial Day, and doing a quarterly highway trash cleanup through the Adopt a Highway program. Altogether, I've devoted a total of 181 hours to my community. And with these projects, added a great deal of sweetness back to it. Now so far, all of these ingredients are pretty different. So how do we bring them all together to make that perfect 4-H officer sandwich? Well, the answer is mayo. So let me be the mayo that holds everything and everyone together and represent you as your Arkansas State 4-H officer at large. Now remember, when you bring out the mayo, you bring out the best. So vote me, Laurel Mayo, as one of your 2014-2015 Arkansas State 4-H officer at large. Thank you.
Thank you, Laurel. Up next is Hunter McCollum from Deshaie County. <laughs> Deshaie? I'm sorry. <laughs> How y'all doing today? Okay, that was really weak. We're gonna try this again. So how are y'all doing today? All right, thank you. Like Faith said, I'm Hunter McCollum from Deshea County. Okay. So for years, my phone's been getting blown up by Mr. Brian Helms begging and pleading me to run for state officer. And over the years, he's made some pretty tempting offers, like renaming TLC to HLC, Hunter's Leadership Conference. And you know, he's even wanted to make a state Rama event known as Hunterism, where everybody competes to see who's like me. I mean, who would not want to do that? But what finally made me decide to run for 4-H officer at large was he promised to give me first dibs on the 4-H center cafeteria lasagna. I mean, it's great, who doesn't like it? Okay. And so, like LeBron, whenever he went to Miami, you know, he's gone to Cleveland now, but we're not gonna stay on that. I promise, if you elect me as your state officer, I will be great for not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, but 12 months. In all seriousness, I decided to run for 4-H State Officer because I wanted to give back to an organization that gave me so much and changed my life. In elementary school, I was picked on a lot because of how I looked. I was short, fat, and I wasn't the same color as just everybody else. I looked neither white nor African American, Mexican, or anything else. I was the other on the chart. <laughs> now, the bullying, you know, it had its negative effects. I was very antisocial. The only friend I had was my Xbox, which that, you know, made me gain even more weight because I wasn't getting out any. And so, by the time I was in the fourth grade, I'd been to five different schools trying to find a place to fit in. Finally, I found that place at Deshea County 4-H. Within a few months, I became more outgoing and fun to realize that people would accept me for me, and it's okay for me to be who I am. 4-H gave me the confidence I can go anywhere, do anything, um, as well as the drive to see whatever I start get completed. It was this drive and determination that uh, has led me to be named the 2012 Arkansas Teen Volunteer of the Year. Um, and I was also the first Arkansas Teen recipient of the Presidential Volunteer Service Award, as well as being one of 12 teens chosen nationally to be part of the inaugural Boys and Girls Club of America Youth Advisory Council. There I was responsible for identifying fads and helping bring them to light and just point out the problems. Today I stand before you an 18 year old confident college sophomore. I hope to use my time and experience as a state officer to update policies and programs to reach out to more counties. Um, I like to utilize our ambassadors to reach out and help the underrepresented counties because I know for one, my county, I'm the only, you know, senior member, and that's not really good. I love you all, especially <laughs> DeShay County. Hope Brad, you're the best. Um, it only takes one person to make a difference in a community. I owe my involvement in 4-H to an elderly woman in DeShay County, Miss Azzy McGee. I'm sure that most of you can remember who got you involved in 4-H. As a 4-H state officer, I'd hope to pay it forward and help other youth get involved in the best kept secret in Arkansas. 4-H has been a life-changing experience for me and I can't express just how thankful I am to be involved with all of y'all. This is such an amazing program and our motto is to make the best better and we truly do that. Before me, I see leaders in you all and it would be an amazing experience to call myself an Arkansas State 4-H officer at large. Thank you. Thank you, Hunter, and I apparently need to go back to kindergarten. Um, <laughs> all right, next is Aaron Morris from Sevier County. Can we stand? <clears throat> all right. 
4-H is more than just showing animals. It makes you want to shoot to be the best you could be. Hello, my name is Aaron Morse, and I've been in 4-H for 11 years. I'm a member of Lucky Clovers 4-H Club, Sevier County Shooting Sports, and Sevier County Teen Leaders. And I'm currently a teen star and one of the 4-H ambassadors. And I'd like to be your next, one of your next members at large. I put myself in every 4-H that is just represented in the 4-H. But my main project in showing goes is more than just showing. It teaches responsibility and gives you self-confidence. Another one of my project areas is shooting sports. It takes a lot of responsibility and sa for safety and conservation. So how do I represent the 4-H's in 4-H? The first H, head. I think you need to realize that you're able to influence many people. You, I realize that the younger kids watch everything that you do. And they listen to when I tell them about stories, when I've gone to camps and stuff, and they see if they want to do the same thing I've done. And one way I was allowed to do this was becoming a state Cloverbud State Camp Counselor. Okay. The second H, heart. People need to feel like they belong in a group. One way I do in this area is always inviting people and talking to my community about 4-H and belonging to 4-H. I've been given this opportunity to make many new friends around this day and just because of 4-H. The third H, hands. I always feel like you should be able to lend a helping hand through my 12 years sorry, in 4-H that I've been involved in serving community service projects and allowed to lend my hands. A few of my favorites are visiting local nursing homes, buying and collecting food for local food pantries, and delivering soup to the widows. The fourth, last H, health. I think you'll learn a lot in this area by participating in workshops 4-H has to offer. I've been given the opportunity to work, participate in the Teen Leader Conference, 4-H camps, and many more that have taught me life skills and developed my self-confidence. As you can tell, 4-H has given me many opportunities as I may do fun things and help others. And I'm really thankful that 4-H encouraged me to do work in these different areas. And I'd like to take this experience and put it as your next officer at large. Please vote Aaron Morse, next member, officer at large. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Now you'll hear from Sabrina Rivas, Sevier County. So my name is Sabrina Rivas, and I want to be your next officer at large. This year, I went through a traumatic injury, which made me realize what we do is short. Since then, I've learned to embrace every single day. <laughs> my bad, guys. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. This year, I went through a basketball game, and I went up for a layup, and I kind of got hit and landed on my leg. I, my biggest fear came true when I realized I went to the doctor and tore my ACL in two. Since then, I haven't been the same. But 4-H has helped me realize what we do can embrace every single day. I use my head for clearer thinking, as we all should do, because because 4-H has taught us that clearer thinking makes the best better. I've used my heart with my burning passion for 4-H for the past 13 years to realize who I can be and who we all can become. I've used my hands not only to hold my crutches for six weeks and go through the agonizing pain of having my hurt arms, the retarded clicking of going down the hallways, and the horrible dread of fearing stairs and inclines. But since then, I've learned that our hands for larger service can help anything, from holding crutches to walking through a leadership program and helping everyone in the community. I've used my health to make me more active and realize that I can get the leg muscle back in my leg that I lost. Also, I know we're not all stoked about running a marathon or dripping sweat like a maniac, but we all can be active, and 4-H has many programs that helps us do that. We all have the ability to be who we want to be, and I believe that as a 4-H'er, -er, we have many chances. Now, among me being very punny, because I know embracing 4-H is just the best idea, but I've also learned that little facts can help us do all. Like, did you know the four-leaf clover is actually an identical clover to the three-leaf? But each leaf represents something. The first is for faith, the second for hope, the third, love, and the fourth for luck. Now, I believe, looking at our wonderful mascot, that we can embrace all four. 
having faith that wherever we can do in 4-H can lead us down a path that hopefully is the best path for us. Best path for us. <laughs> Loving the fact we're with everyone here, embracing everything that we all love. Lucky enough to spend it with friends and future family members because, of course, we are one huge family. Working together to embrace a new day. So I like me because I will be your crutch you can lean on, helping you embrace every moment of 4-H. So vote me, Sabrina Rivas, as your next crutch. Thank you. Thank you, Sabrina. Next is Kyle Russell, Sebastian County. Good afternoon, Arkansas 4-H. Hi, my name is Kyle Russell, and I'd like to be one of your next state officers at large. Now, when I was preparing for this speech, I wasn't entirely sure what to do. So I didn't just want to stand up here and talk about myself full time. I mean, anybody can do that. So I went to someone I knew could help me, my county agent, Jesse Boxner. And I said, hey, Jesse, what should I do for my speech? Can I talk about my community service projects, like in my club where we participate in the Adopt the Highway program, or in our county where we always help with the cancer support house? And he said, uh, I think you're on the right track, but just keep going with it. So I said, well, what, what about my projects? I like my beef project. Can I just bring a steer and show him how to show it? He said, nah, I think that'd get a little messy. And so, what else can I do? I really like the high adventure trip. Can I bring a canoe and just show him how to use it? He said, uh, I think you'd have a hard time fitting that through the door. And so, I thought for a minute, and I got it. He said, hey, Jesse, I love shooting sports. And you're like, no, no way. <laughs> yeah. I was out of projects, so what else is there? I could talk about leadership, but even though I've served in my club in my county, and even at the state level as an ambassador, leadership's hard to talk about, but I know how to show it. And he said, well, that's awesome, but how are you gonna do it? You know, leadership isn't done by just one person. Leadership takes more than one person, because you have to have someone to lead in order to be a real leader. So I need y'all's help for that. I need you all to stand up and let's sing a little song. I promise it's not hard and I'm pretty sure you all know. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, yell for rage. If you're happy and you know it, yell for rage. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, yell for rage. Y'all did a great job. Now, I believe that if I can lead this whole great big room of people just like that, then I'd do a great job of leading you this next year as one of your next officers. So just remember, later this afternoon when you all go vote, if you're happy and you know it, vote for Kyle. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. Last but not least, our final candidate is Ms. Stephanie Williams from White County. Okay. All right, let's give them all a round of applause for their hard work and excellent job on their speeches. We would like to wish them good luck. Remember, you can only vote for four candidates. The voting process has changed. You will not vote with paper, a paper ballot that is distributed by your county extension agent. You'll be voting using the electronic voting machines that are being provided by the Washington County Clerk's Office. 
Voting will occur in Maple Hill South, room 145, from 4.30 p.m. until 6.30 p.m. tonight. There will be signs set up in the courtyard helping to guide you to this location. Only Arama participants will be allowed to vote and you must present your voter ID card to the election worker. If you do not have a voter ID card, you will not be allowed to vote. Please vote at your earliest convenience and make sure to cast your vote before the voting period ends. Be sure to thank the staff from the Washington County Clerk's Office for helping you vote. And we would like to ask that all of you guys don't go at once. Um, it's going to be really hard if all 500 of you go at 4.30 and are like, yeah, let's vote. Because I'm not exactly sure on how many machines there are, but there's not 500. So um, again, remember that you can only vote for four candidates. And don't forget, it's not too late to take part in the social media contest. We have many ways to win, and so use hashtag Arkansas Electric Co-op and hashtag 4-H Strong to qualify to win one of the two iPad minis that we're giving away tonight. Plus, you can upload a fun candid photo to our Yap to win a new LED HGTV. This afternoon, we are pleased to have Farm Credit sponsor our speaker, Ms. Lisa Smart. Lisa Smart is a 50-year-old woman who loves to laugh. Born in a small town in West Kentucky, she now writes a weekly newspaper column from her home outside Dresden, Tennessee. She lives on, a, on 16 wooded acres with her husband of 25 years, two teenage sons who sometimes fight, two dogs, and two male cats that desperately need Prozac. <laughs> Public speaking has been Lisa's passion for more than a decade. She has spoken to groups around the country on subjects like finding contentment in a discontent world, and we're all in the same boat, so grab a lifeline. Her future aspirations include organizing her purse, eating more green leafy vegetables, and cleaning out the hall closet. She believes laughter is a gift and loves to share with others her personal weaknesses, struggles, and the sheer joy of daily living. Her first book was published in 2007 entitled The Smart View, Life, Love, and Cluttered Closets. The first book in the funny and romantic Doug and Carly series was released in 2012. Doug and Carly highlights the antics of a tall, funny, insecure, chubby southern woman on a great quest for love. Very little research required. In the sequels, Doug and Carly's Love Conspiracy and Doug and Carly, Matchmakers on a Mission, have now been published. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Lisa Smart. Squeezy thing. I know y'all are like, are you supposed to squeeze it? No. Where is it? Oh, right here. I was looking for it on top. I'm sorry. My name is Lisa Smart. I'm a very inefficient microphone finder. It's good to meet you. It's great to be in the great state of Arkansas. I want you to, I know. I'm missing Tennessee's 4-H uh, experience in order to be here with you. I know. And that's great. Thank you so much. Although I will say the tunnel scared me yesterday. How many of you come through the tunnel to get here? I know. I was like, like going like this, and then I realized I was going to get killed because I'm the one driving, right? You know? But it was. It was scary. It is a joy to be with you. I know what you're thinking, so I'm going to go ahead and say it right now. Because some of you may have already whispered it to your neighbor. You're saying, you know, I'm not a rocket scientist, but if I were going to get a speaker for a teenage group, I'd get somebody cooler than a fat woman who's 50. And I know, I get what you're saying. In fact, you may be wondering, like, are you qualified to speak to teenagers? I want you to know I'm absolutely not. In fact, I wasn't even cool when I was a teenager. When people first started asking me to speak to teenagers, I told my friend, I said, can you believe this? She said, no, I can't. She said, Lisa, you're the least cool person I know. And I said, I know. And she said, I said, I wasn't even cool when I was 16. And she said, I know. And, and we had a conversation, and, and she said, and you have the worst clothes for teenage events. Because if you speak to teenagers, you're supposed to have some swag, you know? And I have old woman business clothes. And, and so I began to realize, wait a second, I was so completely underestimating your ability to be an adult. And I want you to know I'm speaking to you today not about subjects for teenagers, but about subjects for life. 
And as far as my qualification, I want you to know I have none. I have no qualification to speak to anybody about anything. I get to go around the country, and my qualifications to do that are that I had a good grandmother. Any of y'all know what I'm talking about? I go around the country not with a bunch of stuff that's new, but a bunch of old-fashioned Mima wisdom that we forgot to apply. And that's why if it's something, if you're worried that something today is going to be over your head, trust me, it's not. If, it, if it's over your head, it would have to be over my head first. Because in third grade, I couldn't even learn my times tables. In fourth grade, I couldn't learn my times tables. And now, even as a 50-year-old, nine times seven makes me stop for a minute. So don't worry about it. It's not going to be hard to understand what we're talking about today. Talking about having no qualifications, I have a funny story. A woman in Texas called me one time, and she said the following. She said, Miss Smart, every year for our keynote address, we get someone really smart and really educated to be our keynote speaker for this big gala we do in Dallas. She said, but this year, we're going a completely different direction. And I started laughing, and she realized what she said, and she said, oh, Miss Smart, Miss Smart, I'm so sorry. I said, no, I'm just glad when you realized you wanted a stupid speaker, I'm the first person you thought of. That's called top of the mind recall. I want you to know I do remember, how many of you all are 16 right now? Any 16-year-olds? Yes. Woo! I remember being 16. I cruised to the streets of Denton, Texas in my ride. And you're probably thinking, well, being as you probably had legs under your armpits and you had John Denver glasses, that ride couldn't have been too cool. And you're right. My ride, and you'll have to look it up on the internet later. Don't get out your phone. Because when I see people get out their phone, I physically assault them from the stage. Because I don't work for the University of Arkansas, and I don't work for the state of Arkansas, so I'm not really liable for what I do. No, I'm just joking. But don't look this up, but I drove in, uh, when I was 16, I drove a 1973 Gremlin. <laughs> Woo! Some of you sponsors are like, oh yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah, I drove a Gremlin. Don't I look like the kind of girl that would drive a Gremlin? Yeah, it was hard to fit in there, but I did. I drove a Gremlin and I thought I was really cool cruising the streets of Denton. You may think, well, Lisa, you're six feet tall. You were probably a basketball player. I do come from a long line of basketball players. How many of you all play basketball? Yeah, awesome. Thank you for playing on my behalf. I'm really bad. Uh, my dad played for LSU. He's six eight. I'm six feet. Everybody in my family is a giant, so of course we play basketball, right? Except for one problem. Not only could I not learn my times tables, but I cannot play. I have no hand-eye coordination and no aggression. You know, I'd be on the court saying, hey, if you want it, you can take it. I just want to be your friend. I just want to be a friend. And my coach used to say, Lisa! I'd say, yeah, who's the biggest person on that court? That would be me. She'd say, then get some aggression. And I realized I do not have what it takes to be a basketball player. I always wanted to be a ballerina. Any of y'all? I know some of y'all are laughing. You're like, well, honey, let me tell you, you may have wanted to be a ballerina, but God didn't make you a ballerina. You're right. You're right. I could be in the NFL. When the Super Bowl comes on every year, this is the honest truth. When the Super Bowl comes on and they say, yeah, Jim Smith's coming out. He's 6'1". He's 258. I think literally I could have played in the NFL. I could have been in the Super Bowl but I wanted to be a ballet dancer. Can you imagine what happened when I told my parents the big revelation? Because I watched PBS. How many of y'all watch PBS? I'm gonna tell you something. PBS lied to you. <laughs> PBS been lying to some of y'all, I'm sorry. Because PBS would get on there between Sesame Street and Electric Company and say, you can be anything you dream. And I dreamed of being a ballet dancer, six foot two, fifty-four, or that, or a cheerleader. And you know, I don't know if you know this. You already figured out the ballet dancing thing, because when I ran in and said, "Mom, I'm gonna be a ballet dancer," she did something real smart, because y'all are thinking, "What in the world would you say?" Because I was about third grade, about five foot ten, and I said, "Mom, I'm gonna be a ballet dancer," and she said, "What we knew, we, the best thing you could have said to a kid, not to discourage them, but not to lie." She said, well, if God wills it, you are. 
And I ran back outside all excited because I'm going to be a ballet dancer. And I know she looked at my daddy and said, but honey, God ain't willed it. <laughs> so let me tell you, you cannot be anything you dream, but you can be what you were designed to do, what you're gifted to do. And you may have to go through a lot of things that you're not gifted to do before you get there. You know, some of y'all are bright and shining stars right now. You're shining bright in high school. Everybody says, oh, the sky's the limit for you. But can I share something really humbling with you? We don't yet know who's the star in this room. Because I'm telling you, life can change in the next five to ten years, and that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about some things that if I were 16, I wish somebody had told me that are going to put you at the front of the line. And guess what? It doesn't require intelligence. It doesn't require you being the prettiest. Because let me tell you, I was nowhere close to the smartest. And I was nothing close to the prettiest. It doesn't require any of that because your success is dependent on something more important than that, something your meemaw knew, and that's what we're going to talk about today. But talking about weaknesses, I'm first going to tell you some of my weaknesses because the way we bless and encourage people is through sharing our weaknesses. I don't know if anybody's ever told you that. Y'all are growing up in a very narcissistic world, and I'm here to love you enough to tell you the truth. Don't spend your life trying to sell yourself like a used, greasy hot tub on eBay. <laughs> Instead, invest your life trying to promote others and you'll be wildly successful. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm not good at a lot of things. I can't do math at all. I have no spatial ability. The only thing I can do is write. But some of you say, well, spatial ability, how important is it? You know, I mean, like right now, I don't know which way is north, south, east, or west. I won't know how to get back home except for the fact that I have a GPS unit. Thank you, Lord, for not making me look such an idiot. And so I want you to know, I'll, I'll tell you a funny story that you'll understand how badly I have a disability in this area. I had to fly into Charlotte. People, is that North Carolina or South Carolina? Good, right here, front row, yes. You do not have to worry about being a ballet dancer. You're smart. Uh, I flew into Charlotte, and I had to rent a car, which doesn't take a lot of rocket science. Because of GPS, I got to my event. I was coming back the next day to the airport. And this is where some of y'all are going to think nobody would be this stupid. I want you to know this happened in real life. This is not something I made up. I pulled into the gas station. I realized as I was about to the back to the airport, I realized, wait a second, I've got a rental car. If I don't fill this up with gas, they're going to charge me $8.99 a gallon at the rental car place. I don't know what kind of family you come from, but if we had $100 million in the bank, my granny would come from the grave and snatch me bald-headed if I paid $8.99 a gallon for gas at the rental car place. So I looked as I was coming to the airport, and I saw a gas station, and I pulled in. Now, for those of you with no spatial ability, this story will not be remotely funny. But do what I've done my whole life. I just watch the smart people, and when they start laughing, I laugh with them. You can send an email to me later, and I'll explain to you the meaning of this story if you don't get it. But I pulled this little rental car into the gas station. And some of y'all are like, ooh, that fat girl going to trip on that chair. Okay. I pulled, the, I pulled the car into the station, and here's the pump. And I pulled up like this. I got out of the car and realized, oh, phew. I didn't know this car very well. I'm on the wrong side of the gas pump in order to get gas. So I did what I knew to do, because both my parents are teachers and I'm not stupid. I got in the car and pulled to the other side. <laughs> I got out and I looked and I said, shoot a monkey. I think they stuck me with one of those electric cars. I should be looking for a plug-in. I was looking, I was standing there, and I know some of y'all are like, nobody would be that dumb. No, dumb is what I did next. I got back in the car and drove around to the other side. I got out, and this time I started crying a little bit because I realized I'm not going to be able to get gas. I'm going to pay $8.99 a gallon. And just about that time, I'm sure the guy who owned the Shell Station outside of the Charlotte Airport is calling in a DUI. 
He's saying, I thought she was just a big crippled girl, but clearly she just keeps driving around the pump and doesn't pay for anything. She's inebriated. Well, I stood there and I just started crying. I thought, you know, I mean, I can recognize a dangling participle from two states away, but I cannot put gas in this car. And I did, now let me tell you, this is going to be a little free piece of advice. Uh, I did what all good rural southern girls have been raised to do, and guys too. When you're in a crisis situation, look for a man wearing overalls. Amen? <laughs> Absolutely. I am not saying that you could not be a serial killer if you wear overalls. I'm just saying in 50 years, I cannot name a time that somebody was a serial killer wearing overalls. And so a man came out wearing overalls, and I said, Sir, uh, first of all, I want you to know I have not been drinking this morning. And he said, okay. And I said, I just keep driving around. I said, somehow, I am just spatially missing how I'm going to get this to the pump and get that on the side of the gas. And so he did, just like those airport people, he was just doing this, you know, and directing me. And he got me all pulled in. And you said, well, Miss Smart, what in the world is the moral to that story? I'm dying to know. The moral to that story is you are not going to be good at everything. And you might as well accept that right now. Doesn't mean you shouldn't try everything. Doesn't mean you shouldn't be courageous, but you're not gonna excel at every single thing. So what you do is you surround yourself with people who can excel in the areas of your weakness. And you don't be so haughty and proud to act like you don't need them because you do. Every one of you have strengths and weaknesses. And in those weak areas, you surround yourself with people who can help you and be a part of your life. And don't be embarrassed to tell them that you need them. Don't be embarrassed to surround yourself with people who are strong in areas where you're weak. And, and don't, be, don't be afraid to walk as a team because we need each other. That's why you can't make it by yourself. That's why I love 4-H. My son's in 4-H. I've been a part of 4-H. I love 4-H because it talks about teamwork. It talks about going the finish line together, not alone. Because when one person sprints out and they get there, that is not an accomplishment. But when we all pull together, that is an accomplishment. So number idea number one today is we need each other. Idea number two, I'm telling you, I told you this is not going to be high and lofty. It's not going to be hard to understand. This is a very easy concept. If you think you're better than others, it's a sure sign you're not. Let me tell you, friend, I'm concerned about you. My kids are teenagers. I'm very concerned because the world has told you how wonderful, special, exceptional, and beyond the pale you are. And I know that because you were created by God, I know that you are special. But let me tell you something. If you translate that specialness into being better than others, that's a sure sign you're not. We cannot live lives of haughtiness. I've got a great story about this. Any of y'all from the state of California, anybody from California, I always check first. No, I'm just joking. I love California. A gal called me from California, but she couldn't hardly understand the way I talk because some of y'all know what I mean. It's a little bit unusual if you're from California. And I had done an event in Barstow, California, and she called me and said, Miss Smart, I'm calling. I got a reference from somebody about doing an event for our thing. She said, I hope you're not in the middle of a meeting. Did I disturb you? And I said, oh, no. I said, I've got on my orange house coat. I said, now, y'all got to realize, how many of y'all live out in the country? Right. We just live out there. We just live out there so we can run outside naked. I know why you live in the country. I know. I get it. Well, anyway, I told her, I said, no. I said, you didn't catch me in a meeting. I said, my son loves to catch coon and possum in this trap. And then he releases them the next morning, but he looks at them, and we follow him. And I said, but sometimes he forgets, and, I, and then we catch the cat. So I said, I was out there this morning in that coon trap with my big rear end sticking out the back trying to get that cat to come out of the coon trap. Now you can imagine how this story with this accent was a tad bit disturbing to a woman in California. And she came back with this and she was so sweet and just really trying to be very sensitive. She said yes and she got a little bit quiet. She started asking questions about the event and then she got a little bit quiet. And then finally she said this, and I will never forget it as long as I live. She said, Miss Smart, we're planning a very high-end event. 
she said, do you do a lot of high-end events? And you know, it was just a great blessing to have a great heritage from my family. And I, I just said the first thing that came to my mind when she said that, I just said, "Miss," I said, ma'am, I just want you to know I am six feet tall and I will have the highest end there. There will be nobody's end any higher than mine. I said, now, it's going to be sagging a little bit because I'm getting a little bit older, but I said, it will be a very high end. And we started laughing, and then I had the opportunity to share with her what I'm going to share with you today, and that is this. In life, there's no high end, low end people. Don't fool yourself. Just because you live a certain way or you have certain abilities, brother, sister, let me tell you, that doesn't make you high end. And when it comes to problems, guess what problems do? They go all across the spectrum. And I told that lady, I told that sweet woman, I said, I want to tell you something. And I knew I didn't have the job, but I wanted to share this with her. I said, I want to tell you something. I said, if I were to go to a trailer park in our area tonight, and I were to gather all the people together, and I were to find out what problems they're dealing with, what they're struggling with, let me tell you what I would find. They're struggling with difficulties in family relationships. They're struggling with all myriad of addictions, and they're struggling with rebellious kids. And I said, let me tell you what would happen if I gathered all the people at your California event and found out what they're struggling with. They're struggling with family relationships, they're struggling with addictions of every kind, and they're struggling with rebellious kids. They just wear different shoes. She got real quiet, and, and she, she hired me. She hired me right there on the spot. She said, I'm not even going to take it to committee. She said, we want you to come. And that was a real privilege for me. But then sometimes, as the old 70s show said, the devil makes you do something that you don't want to do. Because as she was hanging up, I said, ma'am, before we go, she was going to send a contract. I said, before we go, I want you to know something. And she said, what? And I said, I'm going to put my teeth in for this. <laughs> There's just nothing like scaring them. There's something fun about scaring them, isn't there? Okay. That also means if we think we're better than others, that we can't use certain terminology, we're going to stop using that right now today. I, I'm, in fact, it's funny. When one of your friends uses this terminology, you can say, oh, no, remember what the fat girl told us to do. She told us not to say that. That means we cannot use terms like white trash, trailer trash, brown trash. There is no trash when it comes to human beings, we can't use terminology that makes people think we think we're better than. Because let me tell you the way the world works, friend. If you think you're better than, the world has a beautiful system of showing you how clearly you're not. And so we can't do that. We can't gossip. We can't talk bad. We've got to instead empower people rather than talking bad about them. And that also means your higher-ups, too. I'm going to tell you something that nobody in 2014 has the courage to tell you. If you talk bad about your boss, you're never going to be the boss. That's just the truth. I just love you enough to say it out loud. If you talk rudely about the people in authority, you're never going to have the opportunity to be in authority. There's just a system that works like that. Okay, so number one, we need each other. Number two, if you think you're better than others, it's a sure sign you're not. And number three is something that most adults don't know. You see, I'm not talking down to you because I don't think you're stupid. And that's also why I didn't have to try to dress cool to make you think I'm a great 16-year-old. I'm not a great 16-year-old. I'm 50 years old. And so I'm not going to talk down to you. I'm going to tell you something that most adults do not know and do not practice. And if they did, they'd be way more successful. And if you learn this as a teenager, you're going to be so ahead of the game, it's not even going to be funny. It's going to put you at the top. Whether or not you're smart or not, guess what? Whether you make straight A's or whether you're the one that comes up here and speaks, I get that some of y'all are not going to come up here and speak right now. I do get that. You're a teenager. I do. 
And no matter what, this thing I'm going to teach you will be a life changer, and that is the power of the question. If you walk into a social setting or a job interview or any kind of academic setting, instead of trying to sell yourself, guys, I want you to listen to this, especially when you're on a date. Don't try to sell yourself like a used hot tub. I mean, you know, you're going in there, you're not trying to, you're like, hey, I was in beta club, and then I did this, and then I did that, and, you know, and you're trying to make a girl think I'm so special because I'm selling myself. That's the 2014 way. Can I tell you something about the 2014 way? It does not work. It does not move you forward. So I want you to go into a room and learn. No matter how shy you are, you can do this. Because you think, Miss Lisa, I can't start a conversation. It's hard for me to know what to talk about. Hey, guess what? You don't have to know what to talk about. You have to know the power of asking a question. And that means when you go in a social setting and you don't know what to say, you say, hey, how did you uh, know the person that's our host? How do you know her? Oh, are you from here originally? Are you from Arkansas? Where are you from? People love to talk about themselves. And so when you give them opportunity to do that, guess who they end up falling in love with and thinking so wonderful? They think you're wonderful. Because you know why? Because you're about them instead of about you. And that is a rare thing from age 15 on up to 100. It's rare to meet somebody now who's about others and not about themselves. And when you meet that person, boy, you remember them. If you come in my office and apply for a job and you say, Miss Lisa, I just want you to know I'm going to be here five minutes early and I want you to tell me anything that's going to make me be able to do a better job, that's who I'm going to hire. I don't, I'm not looking whether you're smart. A lot of jobs don't require smart. They require heart. They require work. And let me tell you something. I want you to know this with all my heart. I have not given up on your generation. The culture has said that you all can't do that, but I don't believe that because I know that you can. And I know from going to 4-H events that you can, that you don't have to be narcissist, that you don't have to live with your phone in your hands. I know that's true because I believe that you're something more than just your social media profile. You're more than that. You've got all the creative gifts, all the intelligence that past generations have had. And if you all get out there and you sell that, by being all about others, let me tell you, you're going to get a job, you're going to get the opportunities, and nobody's ever even going to have to run an IQ test on you. And they're not going to care if you're pretty either. Because let me tell you, caring about others transcends all beauty or intelligence. And you can take that to the bank. And I know because I've banked at that place for 30 years. I have. You see, you may have thought that I started out wanting to be a speaker. No, I started out wanting to love and encourage people. And I love what my husband said. He said, Lisa spoke to a thousands of people from our living room couch long before she ever got up on a podium. Life is about making other people feel special. You want to be significant? Make everybody else in the room feel significant. And on the day you die, your life will have counted for something. It's not talked about anymore, but I'm telling you, that's some wisdom you can take to the bank. Now, the, third, the fourth thing we're going to talk about is dating. And you say, ooh, good. <laughs> we're going to talk about dating. And you're saying, Miss Lisa, I know some of you are like, ooh, we're going to talk about it. Some of you guys are like, oh, we're going to talk about dating. Well, let me tell you why we're going to talk about dating. Because you say, Miss Lisa, no offense, but I don't really see that being a 4-H idea. How is that about my future? How is that about leadership? How is that? Okay, I'm going to tell you why every time I talk to teenagers, I talk about dating. I'll tell you why. Every one of us in this room could stand and give testimony to someone that we knew back home who had the world by the tail. They make good grades. Oh, they're so pretty. Oh, they're so smart. Oh, he's so exceptional. Oh, he's involved in 4-H. He's in all the youth functions. And they were going on a trajectory that was this direction. I mean, it was up, 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 up. Some of y'all are those people. People back home saying, ooh, you know that I'm Lima Jean, you know she's going to be doing nothing but wonderful. And let me tell you, if you live long enough, you'll see that the thing that most often pulls somebody off that trajectory, you think I'm going to say meth or alcoholism or something like that. No, you know what I've observed will pull somebody off that trajectory faster than anything? 
getting involved with a loser. Thank you. Thank you, adults. Yes. Absolutely. You young people, you see it all the time at your school. You see it all the time. Maria was doing great. Everybody loved Maria. Maria does blah, 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 blah. And then Maria hooked up with some ridiculous boy slash man. And, and then everything stops. It just everything quits. And, and you may say, well, Miss Lisa, are you one of those people that's anti-dating? No, I am anti-dating a loser. Yes, I am that. I am. And you may say, well, Miss Lisa, uh, how do I know if I'm dating a loser? Or how do I know if I'm in a mature guy-girl relationship? Well, again, this does not take a rocket scientist. It's actually a pretty easy question set that you can ask yourself. Now, let me say, I'm not saying you got to be dating somebody perfect. How many of y'all know you're not going to meet anybody perfect? No. No, even if you're 25. You know, I mean, I've looked out there for perfect people, and there are not very many of them out there. I don't think there's any. There's been one, but that's all. And so you're not going to find a perfect person. I'm not talking about that. But I'm saying there are distinct questions you can ask yourself and you need to stop and take a, take a reevaluation. Number one is, and I wish this weren't true because everybody's meemaw said this their whole life, but it's so true. How does he treat his mama? Does he slam doors every five minutes? Does he like, meh, meh, if you whatever, or is he all about that with his mama? Is he all just got attitude with his mama? Because let me just tell you something that you can believe or not, because I don't know. Maybe you're 16 and you think, oh, this is crazy. How he treats her is eventually how he is going to treat you. And I know that sometimes there's reasons. People come from difficult family situations. I get that. But you ought to at least see a glimmer of hope of somebody trying to live a different family life than the one he's living right now, slamming doors and screaming at his mom and being all unhappy with the people that are in his family. I wish that weren't true, but that's true. Number two, and incidentally, you can get all of these. I'll gladly, I, I, if you want a list of this, so you're like, ooh, I need to talk to my cousin Dolores. If you need, if you want this list, I don't do PowerPoint, but I will gladly send you what I'm talking about today. It's not, it's not high and mighty, but it is a good thing to look at if you're in a dating relationship. It sure is. Because I'm tired of seeing exceptional, precious people like y'all being just grounded by getting involved with the wrong guy or girl. Okay, question number two. How does she treat her friends? I love, this is true of a college, if you get at college level. If you'd start dating a girl and she has a different roommate every two weeks because every one of those 14 roommates were irritating, you need to stop and evaluate who the irritant is in that situation. So how does she treat her friends? Is she one of those people that has to have her way? She has to go where she wants to go. She has to do what she wants to do. And whenever she goes to camp, she has to tell everybody what to do. And they get tired of her because she's bossing them. That is a red flag, number one. Okay, so how does he treat his mama? How does she or he treat their friends? And then this is a really huge one. And I've just witnessed this so many times on the college campus. My husband's a college professor because God has a sense of humor. Uh, anyway, I, I've seen this so many times on our college campus, and that is, does he or she build me up or tear me down? Do you know what I'm tired of? I'm tired of hearing young people talk to each other on the phone, and it's just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they hang up, and I said, oh, who was that? That was my boyfriend. I said, really? She said, yeah, he's sorry. I break up with him, but we're in love. Well, let me tell you something. I'm not, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I know what love looks like. And if you're just constantly dogging each other, that is not what love looks like. And men, can I speak to you especially just for a second? Uh, I have two teenage boys. Uh, don't, don't, don't let, don't let a woman gnaw and, and just totally deflate you by always just uh, being rude and hateful. And in the same way, women, don't let men do that to you. 
It's just that I've seen, I've seen people be so torn down by relationships that were supposed to be about love. And so they end up feeling like they can't accomplish anything. And that's too why sometimes guys will sell themselves hard because they're trying to prove to her that they're worth something. I want to tell you a story about that. I got on an airplane and a good looking young man came sit next to me, 30 something years old. And I mean like an Armani suit, you know, he looked like he was one of the most successful people you'd ever see. And so he began, I began to do what? I began to do what I just taught you to do, which is ask a question. And I began to ask him questions like, where are you going? What is your job? He said, oh, I work for a Fortune 500 company. We were just in the New Yorker. He said, do you read the New Yorker? And I said, no, I read the Dollar General Flyer to see where I can get mac and cheese three for a dollar. I mean, he missed it. It went right over his head. He wasn't paying attention to what I said. He didn't even think it was funny. He was just going right on. He said, I ran the Boston Marathon this year. I said, you did? I said, well, good for you. That's wonderful. He said, yeah, I was 197 out of my age group, and next year I'm going to get in the top 100. And he began to spend two and a half hours on the way to Phoenix explaining to me the wonder that was him. I mean, really, it was amazing. I did not stand in awe. I continued to ask questions because guess what? My life is about others, not about me. And by the time we stood up in Phoenix and he stood up and walked down the airplane aisle, I remember thinking that Armani suit looked like it was hanging on a little second grade boy who had spent two and a half hours trying to tell me that his daddy can beat up my daddy. You know what I'm saying? All those little playground things that, that we say to try to feel big or to try to feel good. But there's a point in our life where she, we should be free of that. We should be free of the need to sell ourselves. And as he walked away, I realized he never asked one question. Don't get involved with a person who's so about themselves that all they can do to you is tear you down. I'm telling you, you are worth so much more than that. I want you to know I never had a boyfriend until I was 23 years old. Believe it or not, not everybody thought this was really adorable. I know it's hard to believe, isn't it? I mean, I just began to, but you know what I used to say when I was single? I'd say, let me tell you something. I'm going to marry somebody exceptional and wonderful, or I'm going to stay single the rest of my life. Take that vision. Get excited enough about who you are. And you know, you won't believe who God brought me. If you go to my Facebook author page, I'll tell you at the end how to get on my information. You'll see a good-looking man. I mean, I couldn't believe it. It was so shocking that my friends looked at the pictures and said, you have got to be kidding. I thought it was just God's way of getting back at the girls in eighth grade who made fun of me, you know. But I'm saying this, don't get involved with somebody who tears you down. Now, I'm going to say one more thing about dating. Well, I'm going to say two more things about dating. We've got a little time. You need to agree in the sexual area. If you think that you're going to influence her or he or and she's going to influence y'all and y'all are coming from two different conclusions, but we're going to influence the other one, and then there's going to be a big change of heart. Let me just tell you, that is not going to happen. You have to agree when it comes to the amount of sexual activity. I know some of y'all are like, I cannot believe Miss Lisa just said that. Well, let me tell you what I'm going to say about it. And I may never get back to invited to Arkansas again, and that is okay. But I want you to know this. The culture has made such fun of y'all really tremendously. And you don't even know it, or you may not have been aware of it yet, and I'm going to explain that, what I mean by that to you. You see, the culture has said, your generation probably, really, it's not you, it's my generation that's done it. We're to blame. Because what we've said is, y'all, when it comes to sex, y'all are the first generation that's like dogs and rabbits. You just like dogs. They can't help it. I mean, they're going to do it. I mean, there's not, you know, they can't. You just can't put a guy and a girl in the same room and them not do that, you know. And really, basically, what they've said, and some of y'all are animal husbandry people. Y'all know what dogs and rabbits do when they have the opportunity. And so, really, what y'all don't realize, and what I hope you go back to your communities and start saying to other teenagers is, the culture's not giving you a pass 
the culture's making fun of you by saying, well, of course they're going to be sex active. They can't wait till they get married. That would, be, that would take restraint. That would take ability. That would take forward thinking, and they just can't do that. They're dogs. They're rabbits. Well, I'm here to tell you in 2014, you may be a lot of things, but, friend, you are not a dog or a rabbit. Not at all. No. And let me tell you, if you think my parents' generation was so much smarter than you and so much more disciplined to you, they aren't. And I can tell you, as somebody who waited, who was 23 and married a, no, 24, married a 23-year-old man who waited, I'm telling you. In fact, it's funny, a woman told me recently, she said, well, I can't expect my son to wait. He's good looking. <laughs> Are you joking? When did we start that process? He's good looking? So somehow that means he can't be forward thinking. He can't make plans for the future. He can't hold off on what he wants today. You might as well say he might as well fail out of college because he can't do something difficult today that's going to lead to a good result four years from now. I love you enough to ask you to do something difficult today that's going to lead to a better result years from now. And I believe with all my heart and all my confidence that you have the ability to do that. I want you to know that I would love to visit with any of you. I know y'all got to do your next thing here pretty soon, but I want to give you information on how you can contact me. Uh, I would love to write back and forth with you. You can call me on the phone. I'll stay up all night visiting with you. If there's something you want to visit with me about, I would love to do that. And all of that information is on my website, and that's it's so easy. It's just lisasmart.com. The only thing is, smart has two T's. So we're so smart we can't spell. lisasmart with two T's.com. And yes, that means my husband is Dr. Smart. I know, isn't that funny? <laughs> Dr. Smart. First person in his dad's family to go to ninth grade, my husband. Nobody had ever gone to the ninth grade. It's an amazing story. If, I, if we had time, I would tell you that story. We do not have time today. But when you go to my website, you can click the Facebook icon. You can get on my Facebook. I'm going to do a giveaway for y'all tomorrow. I'm going to give away an ebook on my Facebook tomorrow. If you want to click on that and like the Facebook page, you can do that. You can follow my blog. I have some funny romance videos on my Facebook author page. Just little two-minute clips. If you're looking to meet somebody wonderful, just some two-minute clips. And I'm going to close the dating segment with one word and hope this will encourage you. If everybody you love, if your favorite eighth grade, I have a tooth that's loose, so if I spit a tooth, y'all, sometimes it's good to be in Arkansas. Amen. Hallelujah. If I do spit a tooth, somebody get down there and scramble and find that because that was an expensive tooth. Uh, I want you to know when I'm closing the dating policy with this, there's one question you always need to ask yourself. If everybody that loves you, that means your favorite eighth grade teacher, your Sunday school teacher, your meemaw, your mama, your daddy, now not your crazy Aunt Ruth who doesn't like anybody, don't include, you don't have to include her opinion, but if most everybody in your life that loves you looks into your eyes when it comes to your dating relationship and says, you could do better. I want you to hear me very clearly. I could fill this stage with people over the last 30 years who've come to me and said, I wish I had listened. Because let me tell you something, if everybody that loves you better than anybody else looks you in the eye and says, you could do better, that only means one thing, you could and should do better. Be careful with dating. We're going to do a quick recap of what we talked about. Number one, we need each other. You can't make it alone. I have so many weaknesses, I couldn't even make it across the country without people. We need each other. Number two, if you think you're better than others, it's a sure sign you're not. Check your pride at the door. Make your life about service. Number three, Learn the power of the question. Go into an interview. Go into a social setting. Don't stimulate the conversation. Ask a question. Let them 
tell about themselves. It will make you look like a rose. And guys, that was free advice. You're going to be the most longed for man in the high school if you go out on a date and ask questions instead of selling yourself. And tuck your shirt in, and that's going to be 10 points right there. So this little young college guy asked me one time, he said, Miss Lisa, I'm not the best looking guy. I said, well, let me tell you, honey, iron your shirt, tuck it in, put a smile on your face and ask a question. And honey, you will get a whole lot better looking. And you girls know that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Okay, learn the power of the question. Four, when it comes to dating, pay attention to what people in your life are saying. And I want to close with one of my favorite quotes. And this is a life motto for me. Uh, it's, it's just become my reason for getting up in the morning. And that quote is this. Be kinder than necessary for everyone you meet is fighting some kind of battle. We don't know who the author is. It's anonymous, but I'm going to say it one more time. Be kinder than necessary for everyone you meet is fighting some kind of battle. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Smart. Let's once again thank Farm Credit for sponsoring this afternoon's speaker. At this time, our current state officers would like to share a few thoughts as they reflect on this year as a as state officer. Up first, we have Phoebe Clark from Pulaski County. everybody today good okay so today is kind of bittersweet for me because I've been in 4-H for 18 years now my sister was in it and I just grew up in it but I'm gonna tell you guys a story about how my state aroma started this year I woke up three hours late three hours my car got sideswiped on the way home it was a hit and run I didn't get any license plate number I forgot all of my presents for the officers in my car. I forgot my officer skirt, I forgot my shoes, and I forgot my khakis. And when I got up here, I was a wreck. And I was two hours late to get here. And I thought to myself, well, how am I gonna make it? I don't have any of my stuff and I don't know what I'm gonna do. And I reached out to my fellow 4-Hers around me and I got my officer skirt, I got my shoes, I got my khakis and I'm gonna send everybody their presents later. Love you too. And I just thought about the support that I've had through my 4-H experience. From when I was little, my mom told me, you know, go out there and try everything. You're not gonna succeed at all of it, but you can definitely try. And all my friends that I've made, Cody Chris especially has helped me through everything. I don't wanna thank Mr. Brian Helms for putting up with me. And I want to thank every single one of my officers, from Boyce and Jansen and Faith and Macy and just Lauren, just every, I'm going to cry, I'm sorry. <laughs> but thank you guys very much. Thank you. Next, we have Macy Copeland from Greene County. We keep moving forward, opening new doors, and doing new things because we're curious, and curiosity keeps leading us down new paths. That was said by Walt Disney. It seems like yesterday, I was trading in my Delta District jacket for my state officer at large jacket. Now that my 4-H journey has come to an end, I must find a new path in life. 
Helping me get a jump start on my new path in life is my mom and dad. They have helped me become a productive member of society and, have, and, to talk to, and they have taught me to be the best person I can be. We have had our, me, my sisters Lauren and Tori have pushed me to, the best, to be the best that I can be. We've had our share, fair share of fights and, and we've went through dad making us sit in the back seat of the car on top of our hands and he's even made us do it in church. I promise you one time our preacher stopped the sermon because dad yelled at us and said, sit on your hands. We may not get along all the time, but they're my sisters and I still love them. I want to thank my family for everything they have done and driving me all over the state just so I can get to an event. I also want to thank Ryan Helms for putting up with me for two years and, teaching, and to, for teaching me to be a great leader. I want to thank all of the 4-Agers and leaders and volunteers for supporting me. I brought some of your supporting me during the year if you don't take anything else with you from this experience. Well, I hope you make great friends and grow as a person. Albert Einstein once said, learn from yesterday, live for today, hope for tomorrow. And the important thing is to never stop questioning. Faith, Phoebe, Boyce, Sabrina, Jansen, and Lauren, it has been a great year with you guys. You guys have become like my family, and I don't know what I would do without you. I loved every moment of our many laughs and interesting conversations. I love you guys and hope you find your new paths and live to the fullest. I want to thank you for allowing me to be your, your stay off your Lord. Last, we have Jansen Riddle from Faulkner County. All right, first of all, I just want to say uh, it's been an amazing ride this year. I mean, you guys have been awesome. And uh, I, want to, I want to point out something funny. I remember first day the officers met, we were sitting there around the table and Boyce and me were sitting next to each other and he smacked me in the arm and we just started giggling, we couldn't stop. And Brian just looked across the table and we automatically knew one of us needed to move to the other side of the table. <laughs> so, the, so Boyce moved and that's how it's been the rest of the time. We've just giggled and had a good time with each other. But uh, I just wanna say thank you to uh, number one, God, because without him I wouldn't be here today. To my mom because she's always been willing to come and help us and take me anywhere I need to go then my dad for always being there when in the hard times pick me back up and my brother for always cheering me on in the hard times and last this officer group sitting over here that you guys I wouldn't be up here today and the officer groups before me and Brian I wouldn't be able to get up here and speak in front of you today. Thank you very much. All right, before we adjourn this afternoon, we have a few announcements. The first place activity winners need to be in your reserved seats at the front of the arena for the program this evening, no later than 7 p.m. here at Barnhill. All ambassadors and new state officers will also have reserved seats up front for the program and, also, and need to also be here no later than 7 p.m. If you are both a competition winner and an ambassador, sit in your competition seat first and then move to your ambassador seat. Be sure to find both seats before the program begins. Pizza orders need to be placed before 6 p.m. this evening for anyone wanting a pizza delivered to Maple Hill this evening after the dance. Your county extension agent can come pick up the pizzas for your county.
Be sure to swing by Maple Hill South, room 145, between 4.30 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. to be sure to get your votes cast for next year's state officers. And remember to keep an eye out for your name. You might just want a Fitbit digital activity tracker. If there are no other announcements, we will see you again this evening at the Activity Awards program at 7.15 p.m. We are adjourned.